What an interesting module we have here then, in its tiny size. It not only has a up to seven channel receiver, but also two brushed speed controllers. Let's see the functions here for the aileron, elevator, and the rudder. And of course, the throttle. And an extra added bonus, a little light strip so that we can have our port and starboard indicators and also our other lights. Stick around and I'll show you what other tricks it has up its sleeve. Now let's have a look at the module in more detail. At the top here it has a printed antenna which is allegedly good up to around 400 meters. However you can remove that and these resistors and put an external antenna on there should you wish. For my purposes I'm only going to be using this on a small model which is going to be relatively close and so this original configuration is fine by me. On the other side of the board there is a small push button switch for selecting the modes which we'll take a look at later and an input to sample voltage. I'm not quite sure what that's about because the board has telemetry through the FlySky protocol once that's selected. When you're setting up the model, particularly with the 4-in-1 unit from Radio Master, you must select the FlySky 2A protocol. If you select just FlySky, you will not get the telemetry. The other thing you should do is to give each receiver a number if you're using more than one of them. Otherwise, if you leave it at zero, it will erase any binding to previous receivers. We'll cover the battery connections in a moment. Here though we have two two-pin brushed motor connections as you saw and in the center the connection for the LED strip which is a WS2812B 5 volt powered nominally. Our standard PWM servo outputs here and in one of the modes that we'll see, we can also output PPM and SBUS on channels 1 and 2. Although I said in the beginning 7 channel PWM, that's a bit spurious as in one of the modes, channel 7 appears on the 6th output here. There are in fact only 6 available PWM outputs, but that is more than enough for most people, I would suggest. Looking then at the different modes, mode 1, the factory default, has 6 PWM outputs plus the LED signal and 2 built-in ESCs on channels 3 and 4, but they're not controlled differentially as we saw. They both spin at the same speed regardless of the rudder. Mode 2, however, introduces differential thrust on those motors in addition to the 6 PWM outputs and the LED signal, channels 3 and 4 are mixed according to the rudder signal. We'll take a look at that, obviously. Mode 3 is where we output SBUS or PPM, and it says that the other interfaces do not output signals. I'm not entirely sure that that's true. We'll take a look. And finally, Mode 4, uh, if it exists on this module, I don't know yet, has the same function as Mode 1, but there is some vague information here about the light strip being controlled on seven channels. I think that means on channel seven and the PWM outputs as standard, the six channels. A little bit confusing, but uh, we'll take a look at that. Before we take a look in detail at those modes, we have to address the elephant in the room. Now here is the elephant in question, and the thing is that the battery connections only support up to six volts. I've measured continuity between the battery positive and the positive of the servo connections. Therefore, you can only feed the board with up to 6 volts. If you want higher than 6 volts, you want to go 2S or whatever, the only option is to power it via a UBEC or BEC type of system. And you can see this one is rated at 5 amps. Remember that this also has to drive the motor current. What I have elected to do then is to use a 1S pack and probably it will be this one 950 milliampere hour for the model that I have in mind. As I'm testing I'm going to set my 
power supply at 4 volts and that way I can measure the current and see what the current requirement is going to be. All that said then let's move on and have another look firstly at mode 1 and then how to switch to the other modes. Before we get into the individual modes, a good question is what mode are we in to start with? It says that the factory default is mode 1, which we've tested and it looks like mode 1. The trick is leave the transmitter off and just power up the receiver. Now I'm going to zoom in so that you can see the LED a little more closely. And you should be able to see there that it's just flashing once occasionally. It does sometimes do a little bit of a dance, but you can see it's just flashing the once. So that's how we know that it's in mode one. Now, how do we change that to mode two? Power everything off again. Now things get a little tricky. We have to press and hold the tiny button whilst we power up. And now it goes through a cycle. It's flashing once there. And it'll do that four times. And then it'll go into the selection mode after about 20 seconds. See it there flashing twice? So that would be mode two if we let go. And then it's flashing three times, mode three, if we let go of the button. And then finally four times, one, two, three, four. And then it'll go back to just flashing the once. So there we are back into mode one. And now when it flashes twice, we let go of the button and we should be with luck in mode two. In mode two, then, we have our ailerons as usual and elevator. However, the rudder doesn't function like the rudder anymore. It's mixed to the differential thrust. If we give it some power, when we move the rudder, We can see our differential thrust working there. So that is mode two. Now to go into mode three, it's the same procedure. So we press and hold the tiny button, power up with the transmitter off. You see it twice there at mode two. We're now in mode three. So if we let go of the receiver in mode three. Now that we are in mode three, then we should be able to see on here the S bus signal and on this little guy, the PPM signal, which indeed we can. If I move the sticks around, can hopefully see the corresponding channels in PPM and S bus functioning. In this mode then, all that we have is the possibility of S bus and PPM. Our throttle no longer works, the motors, we have to control those independently. What use is this mode? Well, I guess you could feed SBUS or PPM into a gyro of some kind, but for me that's a fairly limited possibility. Now I've switched it into the somewhat enigmatic mode 4. The only difference between mode 4 and mode 1 Remember, in mode one, we have our ailerons, elevator, normal rudder, and no differential thrust. But it has some weird control over the LED strip on channel seven. Now, on my radio, I've set channel seven to be this rotary slider, which is probably meant to be on a three position switch. But if we move towards the center position, we get a different effect and as we go up we get a sort of disco stroby type thing not entirely sure of the purpose of this function that's the fairly normal lights then we have this uh, 
as I say, party disco effect. Maybe you could make a, a an interesting sort of VTOL UFO out of this mode. That uh, it's novel, but not much more. That then is the whole four modes. What do I conclude from this little module then? Well, it's relatively inexpensive, and with the dual brushed motor control in mode one and mode two with the differential thrust, I think it's quite useful. These little coreless motors are very, very inexpensive and uh, do the job. Perhaps not these two, they're rather janky, they're uh, quite old, but I have a project in mind I have some new coreless motors to use on that, and we'll see how the thing flies. As always, links down in the description to uh, the product itself and the other things that I've been using. Many thanks for watching.